We had just got proof that I was pregnant. I had to get my prenatal pills, so we went to Rite Aid. A Caucasian man walks up, pushes Dante's into a shelf, and runs to the store screaming, he's got a gun, he's gonna kill him. That was the love of my life and always will be. It was dust, so it was still fairly bright. We come out the store, a cop car approaches him. They told him to put his hands up, and he wouldn't because he was telling them, I didn't do anything, can I talk to you personally? He was asking to speak to them, and they tried to tase him, so he ran. I'm walking down the street, and I start to see the helicopter. I hear, bad. I turn around, and he's running to me. He grabs my right arm. His hand slips out my arm. and they just start shooting him. They ripped me off of him, laid him on the ground full of bullet holes, and cuffed him. Like he was going somewhere. Put your hand behind your back. You can't breathe. You can't breathe. You can't breathe. Sir, stay over there right now with us. You can't breathe. We're confused, and that confusion leads us to believe that we're in crisis. And when we feel we're in crisis, we become afraid, and when we're afraid, we don't talk to each other. And when we don't talk to each other, then we become very polarized and very separated. And there's xenophobia, and the world feels like shit falling apart. The whole fabric of human existence, yet we live in the most connected time we've ever lived. I consider myself a representative of the city that engages the public and help people in those communities understand the power that they have to mold and shape the city. I don't think there's been an increased unjustified use of force by the LAPD. I think there's more attention to contacts that end up being negative in Los Angeles. We have historic lows in crime, yet these incidents seem to be prevalent. They're part of the American landscape now. There are times we do some things in law enforcement where we're just straight wrong. And what we have today that we didn't have 20 years ago is a communication system that brings it all together and makes it seem like law enforcement across this entire country are corrupt, brutal, lying uh, thugs. And that simply is not true. Some of the most influential and significant stakeholders in this community were here today to talk about some of the issues that are going on in our community and nationally and then how we can respond to those issues. Mucha gente de mucha influencia vino se reunió la mañana hablando al jefe de la policía acerca de las situaciones que están pasando aquí. I would argue that the solutions begin with you. Yo digo que las soluciones comienzan. It's up to our faith-based leaders, our educators, our parents. This is a very difficult time for policing. And when you go in front of that police simulator, which has to do with instantaneous decisions, you'll see how difficult it is. You respond to a robbery in progress as you identify a suspect fleeing from the building outside. Give him some commands. Where's your guy? Oh! Wait, wait, wait. Oh! Oh! Put the guns down. Now, in the back, you guys are now my use of force review board. They're just involved in a shooting. So you're going to be part of this decision process. Mm -hmm. This is what happens after you involve in an action. We're going to interview you over and over and over again because we got to know everything. You just, you just shot a man. Police officers are the only ones who have the authority to use force up to and including killing somebody without any kind of due process. Just objectively reasonable force based on the conditions. What kind of situation did you have? Robbery suspect. Is it likely robbery suspects are going to be armed? Most yes. likely. Most likely. What happened when you encountered them? Ran towards us and threw a bag. That's a huge piece of power. It takes a while for you to learn how to manage that power. Is that bag likely to cause great bodily injury or death? 
Uh, great no. bodily injury, death, broken bones or death? No. 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 Do you think you were authorized to shoot him? Yes. Yes. I can tell you within our policy, we would not be authorized to shoot him. In that situation, he is not a deadly threat. He is a threat. You have a right to use force. But is it, it, would our policy cover the use of deadly force for that? No. We've seen really great conversations come out of those community training days because it surprises people how quickly things evolve in a use of force situation. Something happens instantaneously and you have to decide in a split second what you need to do. Every officer put in that situation is going to react differently based on their comfort level. We hire from the human race. You know what I mean? And we're all trained. We all get the same training, but everybody's individual perception is going to be different. Ready! See! Hold up! I was raised by a stepfather who at times was very abusive to my mother, physically abusive. I had to call the police as a young kid and have the police help her, help me as a child, get out of harm's way. The community is only going to call you in an emotional situation, right? Yes, ma'am. If they could have solved it without a youth, they would have done it. But there are times when they really need you to respond. Officers that are there to help them, that are there to protect them. That's one of the things that made me want to be a police officer. How will this profession change you? Crew Officer Hickman, ma'am. This profession can change you both with your relationships with current family members or your spouse. Um, it can take a toll on you as well as your family. Um, also, if you ever have to take someone's life, that will definitely stress you out as an individual. We will change the way we present ourselves to the public in, in, all, in duty and off duty, ma'am. Because people will scrutinize your behavior very differently. That headline looks very different. LAPD officer does, right? Our society has a different standard for different people. So we kind of have to accept that and recognize that's part of the responsibility of this job. We have to find a way to prepare people for the most horrible, horrific situations and yet keep their humanity. It's unrealistic to think that an officer, because he took a training, is going to now go, okay, I'm free. God, thank goodness I took that training because now I'm free of bias. The reason we're standing here today, uh, approximately 24 hours after this tragic incident, is because. Okay. We're gonna get right. To, we're gonna get right to the question. Why are you all hiding the video? If you haven't filled out a, a slip of paper, a yellow slip of paper for a public comment, do so now. Slip. Your, your stupid imaginary slip to say something about my friend. That's dead. Totally understand. Totally understand your answer. Completely. I get it. It's so hard. It's so hard because all you can say is, I am so sorry. And that's all you could say to anyone who, who, who lost anybody they loved. I think empathy is the engine to do this work. The pain is that empathy is not a practice of government in general. And so the way this whole system is set up, it causes the rift between the police and the community. Break and plan is number 621. That's the 621st person that's been killed by law enforcement in LA County since 2000. So our first question is, when are we gonna get released to us? Who's responsible for each of these killings and why none of them have been investigated and prosecuted? How many LAPD officers in here are wearing a body camera tonight? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Roll body camera. Sometimes we have to be the punching bag. We signed up for this job, we'll take it. We have to because Sometimes you just have to be there and be there.
What am I going to tell my kids growing up here? Stay away from the police. As I look at you, I'm freaked out. I'm scared. I don't want to go and talk to you about the guy punching me in the face down the block. I'm going to go and find somebody that I know. Not you. You guys are going to fucking find something wrong with me. Find something to charge me for. Something wrong with the way that I look. It's always that. We have to recognize where we've been where the history of our communities have been, and sometimes we have really hurt each other. And sometimes law enforcement has been used as a tool to do that. The two officers that shot him walked up to me after court and actually apologized. Even they were like, damn, we took this kid's father from him. And we didn't mean to, like, we're sorry. So it kind of brought some kind of closure. It helped a little bit. But I got a question for you. Yeah. Do you like the police? No. The bad police be bad they um, kill they kill people how you feel about them killing your daddy not very good if we don't have engagement with each other in constructive ways then we will continue to be in the same place and 50 years from now we'll be talking about the same things West 7, B Boy Street and West 7. A man with a gun was shot fired at B Street and West 7.